Hello, and welcome to the GDC 2018 HexMap Generator Tool presentation. My name is Fianna, and I'm here with Anjan. Hello. And we are going to share with you guys what the HexMap Generator Tool does, and also some of the insights of the tool itself in Houdini. So the HexMap Generator Tool allows you to concept design your game map environment, and it allows you to design your gameplay and then also your art direction of what kind of assets you would need in your game and then also the textures that are needed for the hex tiles themselves. So with that, let's begin. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Houdini and Houdini Engine, those two things are actually at the very core of the hex map generator tool because without those things, there would be no hex map generator tool. That is because Houdini is a full 3D application that is like any other DCC app on the market where you can do modeling, rigging, animation, effects, rendering, but also it's different in the sense that it's like a giant sandbox with some tools inside and you can take those tools and make your own custom new tools to do the things that you require it to. And case in point, the hex map generator tool is one such custom tool. So you can create these tools in Houdini package them up as an HDA and distribute them to people in your team, let's say, and they can take that tool and use it within host applications or game engines like, in our case, Unreal and Unity, but also Maya, Cinema 4D, and most recently we announced the support for 3ds Max. So that is the cool factor about Houdini in the sense that it is your 3D application and then some more. So the concept origin of the hex map generator tool is the desire to create the classic RTS game environment. We wanted something that would allow us to do concepting of what the game map should look like and something that was from the top down view. When we were looking at the design of the tool, we looked to a number of games that served as very big inspiration for us, not only visually, but also in terms of what we wanted to have within the tool itself, the things that it would do. So one such game that we looked at was Unity of Command. We liked very much the artistic style of the game. We liked that also it was from the top-down view. And we just basically, as we were looking at games, we made observations on, okay, we, we wanted to have these, these aspects. Uh, another game that we looked at was Civilization V. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this game. It's your turn-based strategy game that is from the top-down view with a little bit of perspective. And then the next one was Battle Worlds Kronos, which we really loved because the game just immediately doesn't look like a hexagon map game because nothing is mechanical looking about it. Everything looks really organic, the assets, the textures. So we wanted to have that ability as well in the tool. And Anjong was able to design some parameters that would allow us to distribute our assets and textures so that we could have an organic look in the game. Also, it's from the top-down view. The next two games we looked at were War Tile and Endless Legend, and you can notice that there's a little difference in these two games versus the ones previously shown. They are showing more of a 3D perspective in the game, and we really liked the fact that you could have extrusions or inversions of the hex tiles. So we thought, like, this is really cool. We want to have that in our tool as well. So Anjong made the option to do height elevation or inversion of your hex tiles. And we're going to look at that later on in this presentation. Oh yeah, pay attention that you also need textures on the sides of that. So that's a little different. That's like a, a small thing, but not that small. Here we're looking at the control panel of the hex map generator tool in Unreal. So you can see that there are this top level list of options where you can set the number of hex tile types. And then you can also set the elevation as we just discussed. And then boundary height is actually the ability to have smooth gradation of your hex extrusion or inversion so that you don't get like a sharp cut, like a cliff or something. If you wanted small earth mounds in your map, then you could use this option to have like a, a smoothing of that bump back into the ground height, like zero. You can also assign hex textures and assets assignments to the hex tile individually or to an overall hex area. And then there's additionally a fence option, which we're going to look at later on. So that was the primary set of the controls within the hex map generator tool. Here are some sub options within where you can set the area size, map area size, and also the shape of the map itself. 
So you can have a hexagon shaped map or a square map. And then you can also set the hex tile size as well as controlling the masking of the assets and textures in your map using geometry. So with that, you can interactively watch in the game engine where you're blocking in certain areas of your map. Say you wanted to have like a, a, an area with just trees as a forest then you would just move some basic shapes that you can either create in Unreal, so you can use spheres or boxes, or you can create specific shapes in Houdini, which is what we did. We drew out curves that we used as pathways or bodies of water, and then we created geometry from those and exported them out from Houdini and brought them into Unreal, and we positioned them on the map live so that you can see the assets and the hex tile types update. As mentioned earlier, you can scatter your assets per hex tile, so an asset per hex tile, or you can select a whole area of hexes and then instance assets within that. So earlier we talked about the Battle Worlds Kronos as a really cool example of organic look of the game. Anjan created a number of controls within the hex map generator tool to allow you to randomize asset rotation asset size range so you can set a minimum and max range of how big you want your uh, trees for example so you can also set the amount of weighting per asset type so if you wanted one area to have a bunch of rocks but you wanted one type of rocks to be more predominant than the others then you would just increase the weighting of that asset and there's no limit to the number of assets that you instance in the area here is an example of the randomizing rotations and weight distribution of your map. So we have three areas that are selected as hex areas that we want to instance the houses in. And you can set the randomized rotation to randomize or 60 degrees. And then here you can just load as many different assets as you want to be scattered within those selected regions. Here you can see we have a number of maps that we created and if you don't have a lot of money to buy assets or you are low on artist resource then you can really go a long way with limited number of assets and textures. So if we were to look at this map on the bottom there are only about three trees and five types of textures and some rocks and on the top there's like three trees and two textures and then over here is just the same number of trees and two types of rocks. So just by playing with the randomizing of scale rotations and uh, laying out your, your map using the geometries to mask certain areas, you can really just get a limitless number of options when designing your gameplay and also the overall look of your, your game map environment. So earlier we talked about Houdini Engine and how you can distribute the assets to DCC apps or game engines. Here you can see the same map loaded in Unreal and in Unity, and we didn't have to do any extra work after having done one map in Unreal. So depending on your needs, if you needed this map to be loaded into Maya, Cinema 4D, or 3ds Max, then you could just make adjustments to your HDA and distribute it accordingly. And now I'm going to pass it off to Anjong, who's going to share with you guys some of the cool things within the Hex Map Generator tool. Hi, my name is Anjong. I'm a game internist at Apex. I'm a person who made this Hex Map Generator, so I'm going to share some interesting things in this tool. And I'm so excited because this is my first time at GDC. So let's go. There are some neat stuff. First one is instance type. Second one is simple fence. Fiona already talked about the instance type before, so I am telling you about the more details with a video. There are two modes, hexagon and scatter. Hexagon mode can instance one asset per one hex tile. I recommend to use this mode if you have a large asset, like house. The other mode, scatter, it generates random points over the region, and assets could be instanced to these points. You can control the number of assets, and both can randomize asset rotation and scale range for organic look. There is a video to show this difference. Left is using scatter mode, right is using hexagon mode. You can increase the number of assets, but in order to avoid overlapping with each other, the count cannot go over a certain limit. 
and you can change it, the scale range. If you don't care about the overwrapping, then raise value of intersection perimeter, then you can get a fully packed region like that. Ta -da! This slide is concerning simple fence. This tool has a fence option. If you want to protect certain areas or assets from outside, then just click this toggle, then you can get simple fence very easily. You move the region, then the fence is also updated. If you want to create a new region inside of the fence, then the fence is updated to be out of the new area. And you can create a new fence within the brown area. You can place fence where you want. Challenges. There are tricky things to figure out. Sometimes these were annoying me a little bit, but I also got pleasure from the process of solving these tricky things. Let's see what were bugging me. First is creating simple fence. I mentioned before that. It is a simple fence, but it is not all simple to make it. And second is UV and the hextile borders. Now I'm gonna explain how I get a simple fence. Fence placement is derived from a hex region boundary. Once you choose a region to place fence like that, then you can get those points. These are center points from each hex. I created points like a circle curve. And don't forget to add the normal vector to each point. We'll need it for points number reordering later. Actually, we don't need the internal points. So remove unnecessary points, then only points on boundary of the area are left. But unfortunately, it is not done yet. Uh, there is a problem. The order of point number is messed up. The point number starts with 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I expected the next point is 8, but it's not. It is 16. I wanted the points number to be in sequence along the normal direction like that. So I reorder it. Now we got right the order of a point number. So we can go to the next step. We project points to the floor and we have to find a new normal vector because height can change after the projecting. If you didn't do this process, then you get a tangled mess. You can see this image. It is a tangled mess. If you like it, you can use it, but I wanted normal friends like left image. And also instance the fence type asset will also result in incorrect normal orientation like that. You can see the difference through these images. Uh, extruded geometry, like brown things, was generated from Houdini, not Unreal. Uh, second challenge is UVs. The most interesting part for me was UVs. There are two images, these are same map, but you probably noticed that the borders are different. Left image shows blending to borders between different materials. It is depending on the art direction if you use left map or not. You can choose anything. If you decided use left map, then you don't have to worry about the borders. But it requires some calculating UV's coordinate. This is a prototype of texture. Green means grass, yellow lines are borders. Hexagon shape will require 14 unique hex tiles for maps. Each of the 14 tiles requires precise rotation and position. I used three different materials for ground, grass and sand and concrete. There are a total 42 hex tiles, but I needed only three textures. Then let's see how one texture can apply to all cases of a hex tile. I designed the number of rows to get the 14 hex tiles position like that. Then each UV is fit in right position based on the shape of the borders. 
and each of them has different rotation between 0 and 360 degrees. This information about the 14 hex tiles with rotation is stored like that. You can see a lot of list type. That list meaning is how many hex tile has border edges and how many hex should be rotated. If a tile's edge is a border edge, then input 1. Otherwise, input 0 in a list. Rotations and positions for each hex is extracted to a list. For example, in this hex tile case, it has a list with 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That means it has two border edges and the texture type is number 2. So UBs is located like that. And also the value of the rotation is 120, so it rotates 120 degrees. I worked this process in Houdini. I didn't need to do it again in Unreal and Unity. This is Houdini Engine Magic. So here we have a little video to show you guys the process of the hex map generator tool in Unreal. You can see that we are basically updating an existing map design and we are swapping it with a different map design that we created and laid out in Houdini first. And then we created those basic geometry shapes that we're using to block in the specific areas for asset instancing and texture type. This should give you guys an idea of how the tool works. So while the hex map generator tool looks like it's a simple tool, it is in fact a simple tool to use. And it's simple in the sense that it's easy to use and allows the game designer to just focus on designing gameplay and choosing art direction. And that is not by accident. That is thanks to Anjong designing the tool to not pay attention to any other things aside from those elements of bringing in the assets and textures, being able to have tileable seamless textures work in the areas that you wish to have, and also included the, I'm not sure that we mentioned, but the earlier examples of War Tile and Endless Legend, where you can get the extruded hex tiles, those require textures as well on the sides. So all of these things considered they are a part of the custom tool making process and the hex map generator tool will hopefully give you guys an idea of how helpful it is to be able to have somebody that is a technical artist to create tools for a non-technical user based on a list of requirements. So if you are interested to pursue this further, we have the hex map generator tool asset for download. If you have any questions, I would suggest that you post them in the space below where this video will be. And if you guys are wondering what those images are here on the left, they are actually a few snippets from Anjong's notebook where she was planning and uh, designing the orientations of hexes and, and how all of these things will work together within one single tool. So that's it for the hex map generator tool presentation. We hope that you guys found this information interesting and maybe helpful for your game development needs. Thank you for listening and uh, see you online. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>